Hey everyone, Brian here. This is part one of the myths and legends of the post-apocalypse. You can find part two on Neckbeardia's channel, link in the description. And you can also check the pinned comment for more information too. Post-apocalyptic myths, tall tales, and urban legends. Some time after the end, a group of weary scavers gather around a campfire to tell jokes, sing songs, and share stories. What myths, tall tales, and urban legends do they bring to the campfire? The green oasis paradise which has food and clean water, but no one has seen in person, except for your friend's brother's driver, who claims he accidentally stumbled into it when drunk one night. The ghost that haunts that old hospital, when really, it's some gangers holed up in there with corpses tied up around it. That there's an invisible mutant wandering the hills, murdering groups of travelers in the dark. But, on a full moon, his skin glows like a torchlight. That Varka absolutely totally cures radiation poisoning. 100%, no lies. Strikes me that I really should have posted some myths and legends myself. I don't know how it all started, but they say the scavers up in New England got some sort of language made of colored flags and rags and ribbons and shit they use to mark out whether or not a place is dangerous or has any useful salvage left inside. Hey, did Claude ever tell you about the time he saved his whole camp from raiders by playing for them on his guitar? Yeah. Yeah. Their leader told him he'd let him all go if he could play every song he and his crew requested, and damn if he didn't know them all and bring tears to those raiders' eyes playing them. You go out west a ways, not too far, maybe 40 or 50 miles past this big old river we've been following, and you'll start picking up this radio station in the high hundreds broadcast range, playing music from before the end, and offering a safe settlement to call home. No one's ever found the place, and plenty of folks have died looking. Word is that the cults inhabiting the old city ruins have stopped fighting. Somebody's been running around, killing anybody aligned with a cult, and they've been forced to tolerate each other long enough to stop them. I think there's monsters in the woods. Trolls, mutants, who the hell knows? But all the livestock are going missing. Plus, side is the raiders in the forest are all dead. The monster left their vehicles behind. I saw a plane! I fucking saw one! You can't tell me you didn't see it. It was there. It was heading west, out to sea. We need to find boats now. There's people out in the sea. People with enough supplies to fly planes. Word's gone out that Fillmore ain't been seen last since patrol last night. I heard Ozzy say that he went to check some lights out in the swamps. What the fuck, man? Phil's a smart guy. He knew the stories about those fucking lights, right? You mean to tell me you hadn't heard it either? Jesus, fuck, man. Wanna hear it? Uh, sure. Aight. Well, back before the war, some high-up military guys running armor drills with a squad, right? Turns out, they get to the swamp, and all their tanks and trucks and shit get stuck in the muck. What's this have to do with anything? I'm getting to that. So, they're stuck, but the swamp water floods all their engines. And then it gets dark. So all of the army guys are wandering around with flashlights everywhere, trying to fix their shit. And then the bombs hit, no survivors. Oh, fuck. So why the lights? Well, some guys say that on foggy nights with no stars out, the ghosts of those army guys don't realize they're dead and they're still trying to get moving. Those lights, they're the flashlights. Fuck me, man. Phil's a retard. <laughs> That's one way to talk about Phil. Speakers one and two are walking down a road in midday. Did you hear what happened to Toledo? No, never heard. Why? Apparently. Back a long time ago, before everything went to shit, some scientists figured out that the whole city was built on top of some caves that had, like, natural gas or methane or some shit. So the city said, fuck it, let's get at that. Okay. So they're getting everything ready, and they start to pump it out. But then the bombs hit, and one of them lands right in Toledo. Oh yeah, that sucks. What happened next? Well, all that gas down below suddenly rushes out of the caves, but then it catches on fire. The whole fucking city, or what's left of it, burns to cinders in a night. There's still burning gas there. 
and it's still on fire. Shit, I knew leaving Ohio was a good idea. Well, yeah. I left for a reason, not on a whim. Really? That was a pretty nice place. Wall and everything. Why'd you leave? He's met with a short silence. It wasn't as nice as you think. We still had our problems, and it wasn't always obvious. Huh? What kind of problems? Speaker 2 waits a bit before she speaks. Sometimes on a cloudy night, when I was on patrol through a section of the town, I would hear these dogs barking in the distance and... Feral dogs everywhere. Well, that's the thing. We didn't have a dog problem that we knew of. One night I was out and it was all foggy and shit. Those dogs barking started again, but they were closer than they'd ever been. Like maybe a few blocks down. I went out to sea and... And what? Our town had a series of solar panels that kept some electricity on, and they had them hooked up to the streetlights, so they still worked in the night, yeah? So I was walking down the street, and under one light, there was this huge fucking black dog right in the light. Jeez, what'd you do? I stared at it, and it turned to look at me, and then the light above it just turned off, and... I swear the dog's eyes were red, like Satan's asshole glowing red right at me. <laughs> Satan's asshole? <laughs> the male politely keeps quiet during the following pause, and I wouldn't. <laughs> then all of the dogs started barking again, but they sounded too fucking close than before, like a whole fucking pack just yards away. I've never run so fast in my life. Fuck. Why didn't you tell me this shit? Did you see that giant truck that rolled through last night? That thing looked like it was built like a tank. It even had a huge gun on it, all decked out with shit too. Maybe it's some warlord or something trying to take control. You best stay inside at night, or the boogeyman will get you. They got Saddler last night. We only found a few chunks of him left. I heard that guy over there just came back from the Appalachians. Says so something like, the snow tore the flesh from their bones. No idea who he's talking about, but I'm pretty sure whoever they are didn't die of frostbite. Maybe wolves or some shit. The caravan just got in from Salt City. And man, did she have some wild stories. Apparently, the militia that rules there is super fucking tight. Like, stick up assholes tight. Well, apparently some dude is stalking around after curfew, kidnapping guys, and then dunking them alive in melted candle wax. He leaves them out in the streets with fucking wicks in them, dude. Lit. Like actual candles. I need to visit Salt City sometime. You see that guy in the corner? The one with the scarred face? He said that they're burn scars. He said he was in Toledo before the day and lived. I heard up in the mountains there's a huge stash of guns. Like fucking huge! tanks, MGs, and even a real nuke. It's all right for the picking. Sure, everyone who went up there died. That's just because the muties don't want anyone getting it. They're too stupid to work them, but not dumb enough to let another get to them. No offense, Bill. We bring a wag, their arrows will just bounce right off. What about Strazer? He was loony before he went up there. And just because he wanders down muttering something about a fog with claws doesn't mean shit. Oh, I'm excited for this. Tales of the great ranger Chuck of Clan Norris are far and wide, inspiring hope and courage in those who need it most. They say that when the bombs fell, they sent 30 at him alone, and they all failed to explode. They say he once won an arm wrestling contest against a mutant chief, all for an orphan. They say Chuck of Clan Norris's sweat can cure rad sickness. There were plans before the war to put his face on a mountain. They stopped because the rock wasn't cold enough for his glare. The two speakers are sitting on a couch with a fire going in the common house. Yeah, man. Me and Willie went over to the church yesterday. Dude. All broken down and shit. Like, no one took care of it. We tried to get a fire going to pray, but then these cultist dudes showed up like they owned the place. Whoa, man, what happened? We fucking hid, man. We weren't gonna fuck with no guys with AKs. Speaker 2 takes a massive hit from the bong on the table in front of them while the first speaker continues. They had red paint and started doodling this weird satanic shit all over the walls and the pews, saying something about, 
the true lord. But when they got to the altar, they seemed to slowly cover the thing with this huge circle. Whoa, man. Devil worshippers will get you every time. Well, then these fucking guys put some skulls. And I mean, actual fucking human skulls. Like a, from a person. Still bloody and shit up onto the altar inside the circle. And then they all got around the altar and cut their wrists. Fuck, dude. Were they trying to summon the devil? Eh, we don't know. They all got struck by lightning right when they almost finished. Destroyed the altar, too. The guys around it died, and it looked like they had their eyes burned out. Holy fuck! What did you do? Fucking booked it back, shitheel. What do you think we'd do? Speaker 1 then snatches the bong from his comrade's hands to take a massive rip from it. I am sick of this place. If I have to trek over this godforsaken glorified hills anymore, I'm gonna go insane. <laughs> Storms coming up constantly out of the sea. Fuck this. I'm heading west. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna buy me a truck or a bike or some shit and run with the road gangs out on the plains. Hopefully one of those not insane ones. I'm gonna ride with them and set up on the west coast. How much worse could it be there? I have it on good authority that there are a bunch of survivors up north that worship this old cube made out of weapons of every shape and size. They also say it dates back before the end and was found intact in a collapsed building somewhere. Everyone who's tried to find this strange relic has been chased off by heavily armed bandits in mismatched clothing, or have simply disappeared. Pop a squat and listen to the big truth, boy. To the south, in the big dry, there be some strange, awful tombs built by the before men, and they's covered in strange symbols, sure. Old warrior, Redbeard, he not be fearing the before men. Say they and their magic gone, who? So he be taking his men, and he be opening them tombs, and he find strange things. Empty metal coffins, great sacks of metal rods, all left without guard nor key. So he be going back to get some more men to take it, and then he be getting sick. His hair, it did fall out, then his teeth, and then he was bleeding from everything. And you know, before he die, his skin, Slid off. All those boys, they died. Where the before men, boy? They had sticks that spit fire. They had weapons without beast. They had magic to talk across the big blue. Some of it's still left, and none of it's good. So. This one's a little before your time, but back when, there used to be a television in every home. In the palm of your hand, sometimes. Movies, news, people on the other side of the world were only a few clicks away. Since the end, nobody's had the time or the reason to try and get one of those things working. And the ones that have say there's something out there still transmitting. Nah, not the old civil distress signal. No, I'm talking about the real thing. Channel 77. I've heard that if you rig up an old screen, scrounge up an antenna, and if you fuck with it just right, you'll get a picture. Some people say it's a girl reading the news. Only it's the news of now, not then. Like when Murdoch got torn up by those shades in the steel forest, that sort of thing. Other people have said there's people on there who dies years ago, answering questions, sitting on a couch in a dark room. I don't know. It felt like bullshit. But there's been one thing everyone can agree on. Something that I swear nobody should be able to know. They call her the host, Melanie Dawes. Cute, blonde, two black holes where her eyes should be. There's a reason nobody settled London yet. Something's got into the water there, tainted it. The only people who can even drink it are, well, fucked in the head. Doesn't get you halfway there. You'll know them when you see them. Peeled skin, bits of metal poked through their cheeks, nose, arms. It's the pain. They get off on it. Can't live without it. So no, son. We're not going to fucking London. Oi, stupid cunt lad. What are you doing? We don't shoot the birds. Not here. Look up. Really look up. They've been watching us since we got here. 
Only reason they aren't stripping the skin from our bones is that we ain't giving them a cause to. The crown? Ha! Up and fucking legend, lad. All those inbred bastards died off in the flash. And a good thing, too. Ask yourself, who do you want ruling you? A hard, seasoned bastard had got where they were by surviving and leading? Or some perfumed dandy man, ordained by a floating beard in the fucking sky? I'll tell you now, you see any man saying he's the king of England, you put a knife in his eye, save you a lot of trouble down the road. Kinda went fucking Russian there at the end, I don't know. Those accents were fucking weird. Save me. You ever hear about the spirit of the waste? The fuck is that? Are we praying to some wasteland gods now? Nah, man, it's just a spirit, not a god. What's the fucking difference? A spirit of supernatural powers, but it ain't a god. You don't pray to it. Well, <laughs> what is it then? Well, some say the spirit of the waste is the dearly departed soul of a scabber saint. An old guy that loved the decent folk. You know, the farmers and wanderers that ain't taken up to banditry. Used to pass out food and water to him. <laughs> Sounds like a nice guy. Well, that's what saint means, you doof. Well, some say he still lives on, a ghost that's still looking out for us. You ever wonder how, even after hundreds of years, we're still finding canned goods, guns and bullets, and stuff from the time before? <laughs> Not really. So it ain't never occurred to you that a dozen generations of scavers and bandits should have cleaned out all the good supplies by now? Well, it is pretty mysterious now that you mention it. That's where the spirit comes in. Some say that he pulls canned food and bullets from the great beyond and stashed them in containers for us to find. L like a Santa Claus with bullets? Yeah, kinda. He wants us all to be happy and safe and keep an eye on us every step of the way. I've heard a hundred tales from fine men who were bleeding out, staggering around, knocking on death's door, only to pull open some random cabinet and find a needle full of healing medicine out of nowhere. That sound just like coincidence to you? Sounds like tall tales to me! Well, maybe you'll be that guy one day. I'm telling you, the spirit of the waste is watching out for us, and so long as we don't go raping no women and killing no innocents, you'll have our backs forever. Yeah, yeah, you believe that, old man. I'm going to sleep. Night. Night. Whew, Brian here, back again with a follow-up after that wild and crazy ride. Had fun playing with some new accents and going a bit loopy with my voice acting during that batch of stories, and I hope you had a bunch of fun too. Remember, if you'd like to check out part two of this series, head on over to Neckbeardia's channel, which you can find a link to their channel in the description or the pinned comment. And if you like our stuff, by the way, give our like and subscribe buttons a lovely little slap and tickle, because it always helps us if you do. And if you always want to talk about our content or share any stories of your own, please do so in the comments below. Don't ever feel shy or too worried or nervous to do it, because we're always reading it, good or bad. It always helps us too. So we'll see you in the comments. Head on over to Neckbeardias for part two. Have a good one, everybody.